Today we're going to look at modeling and UV mapping and how to integrate the two and really when to use UV mapping. I've got other videos on UV mapping and introduction to the topic and people always find this somewhat baffling so I think by providing an example it will help you understand some of the main concepts. So what we're doing here is using UV mapping to solve a problem where we want um, our model to fade off um, towards the end of these smaller vessels coming off the aorta. And if we look at the alpha channel, you can see that they're fading out here. So Maya's got some good tools for unwrapping your object and laying it out in 2D space. So if we look at this object here in the UV editor, you can see <clears throat> this is what the UVs look like for this one. Now this looks a little bit crazy, but it was suitable for my purpose. I wanted to make a UV map that allows me to paint out the end of the vessel. So if we take a look and select the faces at the end of this vessel, for example, you can see they're right here. This vessel, they're right here. These are going to the kidney. And then if we select these ones, you can see that those faces are here. And so ultimately what we want to do is to lay out the UVs of our model so we can take it into Photoshop, this UV map, and to paint out whatever details we want. So I already have UVs for this one, obviously. I'm going to create a new UV set for this. So one thing to note is you can have more than one UV set per object. I actually do have two UV sets for this one already. I was experimenting with different ways of doing this. Uh, but I can create a new UV set here, so create empty UV set. So when we create this, it doesn't change over. We can go to UV sets and switch to that one. And now you see it's, it's just empty, so it actually has no UVs. So the simplest way to do this, I think, uh, is just to go to UVs, cylindrical. And it does a pretty good job here of orienting it correctly although it doesn't encompass the whole model, so I'll just shift this over and you can see what's happening in here. And then I'm just going to scale this up so it surrounds the entire model. So uh, the next step is to, well, I could put this seam maybe behind the model. We're going to be rendering this from the front. So this um, cylindrical mapping uh, widget here has this little red T at the bottom and allows you to switch between transform node, uh, sorry, transform mode and just the normal controls of the UV map uh, projector. Uh, but if we click on the T down here, then we get our normal uh, controllers. And if I click on the big blue circle, it activates rotation. And if I rotate the projection node around, you can see this bright white line moving. And this is the seam where that cylinder projection closes up. Now what we want to do is cut up this um, UV map so it can unfold into 2D space. So right now there are no seams running along these vessels at all. So I want to cut along here so I can sp split this open and lay it out. So we go into edge mode and I'm just selecting a bunch of edges sort of along the back of the model where it won't be that seen. I could probably do some double clicking to select this row a little more efficiently, but so you can see what I'm doing. And let's see, I'm going to cut around the top here and just leave it sort of attached at these flaps here, these two edges still. And if I go into the UV editor, I can go to cut, sew, and choose cut. And you can see that it's cut an edge along here. Now I want to do the same thing here. And so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to have to cut around here so this whole vessel at the root can open up, but I'll leave it attached on these two faces here. 
here. So now I want to run a cut around here. There are a bunch of tools we can use. So down here under unfold, if we select all these UVs, so just double click on one and click unfold. And then it's going to try and unfold this for us. So this makes sense here. This is for these vessels over here. And then this is the this part here. I don't know, maybe I did this in a dumb way. I did this differently when I was trialing this out. So I'm just doing some experimentation. So maybe instead I will cut up here. So we've got to cut the inside too so it can lay down flat. I'm going to cut this. Now, will that be enough? Well, let's just try it. So we can go to UVs and we can unfold again. Okay, so let's see. I just want to make sure these end bits are all together. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So all of this is the inside. These faces are in the inside of my vessel. Sorry. The inside of my vessel here. And this is also the inside. We can see here if I select these, we can see that's selected. This is this rim going around here. And so we're going to want to paint our black. So it's going to be black here and fading out. So this should all be black too. And then just fading this out here. So I think this makes sense. Okay. So we've made our UV map. That's good. So now we want to take this into Photoshop so we can paint out a mask at the end of our vessels here. So to do that, we go to Image, UV Snapshot. And we want to save this somewhere, and I'm going to give it a new name. Save it as a TIFF, and then the size will depend on how big your renders are and how much detail you need to see. So now we've saved that as a TIFF, and we'll go over to Photoshop. Open Demo Mask. So it looks like there's nothing here, but I'll add a new layer and fill it with white and put it underneath that layer that came in. And you can see it's just a representation of our, UD, our UV map. And we're just going to use this as a guide for painting. So uh, this will be my BG white. And then I'll create a new layer and I'll call this paint mask. I'm going to save this, save as. A Photoshop file. So I can paint over here all I want. It doesn't matter. It's not on the UV map, so it won't be applied to our model at all. So I'm just painting out the tips of these vessels. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Go back to my brush tool. Save. So something like this. So this is just going to be a mask in opacity. So it's just black and white values. Black in this case will be uh, transparent, so no opacity. So black equals zero, so zero opacity means transparent. And white will be 100% op opaque. Now I don't want any of this to go over this edge over here, so I'm just going to go in and make sure it's nice and clean because I was using a soft feathered brush. Again, this is outside these lines, so it's not going to make a difference. It's only stuff that appears inside these lines that will be mapped to our model. And now we want to save out the file texture that we're actually going to bring into Maya. We don't want to bring this Photoshop file in, so we're going to save out a TIFF. First, we're going to turn off this top reference layer because we don't want that to appear on our map. And we will save this as a TIFF with uh, no layers. 
and we'll call this demo mask painted and let's just create a new material for this AI standard surface and this will be demo vessel mask material what we want to do is to map that file to the opacity of this shader. So let's open this up in a hypershade. Okay, that's not the one, this one. So we just made this one, so we haven't changed anything about it yet. So we're gonna bring in a file node, so tab, file. And then we want to import that file that we just created. Now, just so we can see it on screen temporarily, I'm going to put it into the, our, our base color node. This is not what we're going to do for our workflow. I just want you to be able to see it. So I'm going to connect out color to base color. And if we hit six on the keyboard, we see something weird. So the reason we're seeing this is because we saw earlier that there is more than one UV map on this object because I was working on different ways of doing the same process. So this must be using an earlier UV map. So if we go into the UV editor, we can see that we have, uh, oh, gotta select the object. You can see that we have demo UV, the one I just created, UV set, that's the other one I was working on earlier. And then the original one, this weird one. So it's actually still using this one for that file node. Now I could solve this in a couple of ways. I could get rid of these other um, UV sets that I don't need. However, there may be occasions where you want to use more than one UV set, one for color, one for particles and so on. So it's useful to be able to have more than one. So how do we make this file uh, pay attention to demo UV, this one here? So to connect a, a specific UV set with a specific texture, we go to Windows, Relationship Editors, um, UV Linking, and we'll go to UV Centric. Select this object. And so you can see our different UV sets here. And so we want to use demo UV, and we're going to use that for the demo file texture. And when we do that, now you can see those painted bits are placed appropriately. Now, finally, I don't want this attached to the color channel. Let's give our vessel bright red color. Instead, we want to connect this to the opacity. So just a word on opacity before we go any further. Um, if we look at our uh, attribute editor, so you know that we have transmission. So this can change whether something is visible or not, but this does it in a physical sense. So something can be entirely transparent, but it can still reflect and refract uh, and do all sorts of things, right? Um, so this is physical transmission of light. What we want to connect to is under the geometry tab here, opacity. And so this is just whether it's there or not, whether it renders those pixels or puts them in the alpha channel. Um, and so we want to connect that TIFF, the black and white values of that TIFF into opacity here. So if we take out alpha and connect, oops, sorry, out color and connect it to opacity, now you can see those are showing up here. And so finally, if we do a render, save my scene. You can see that these are just faded out here, no matter what angle you look at. So it's different than doing uh, a mask in 2D. This mask works in 3D as well. And if we just go and look at the alpha channel, 
you can see that that's in the alpha channel too. So when you render this out and put it against a backdrop, uh, it will it will fade into transparency here, which is what we're after. 